Hey everybody, Tony D and little Joan here with a hot take uh, on Biden and what he's up to. Well, he's getting all his ducks in a row for the for the coup he's launched. <laughs> um, Fortune 500 CEOs will intervene if Joe Biden isn't inaugurated by January 20th from Breitbart. Executives from Fortune 500 corporations say they are planning to intervene if Democrat Joe Biden is not inaugurated into office by January 20th, 2021. Uh, a report by CBS News states that in a conference call late last week, Fortune 500 executives were planning to step in on behalf of Biden to pressure Republican lawmakers if President Trump holds up the former vice president's transition. Oh my. I hope you guys do. And I hope Trump steps on your balls for doing it. I hope he comes into that office with a list of you guys and goes, Oh, you wanted to you wanted to help Biden, huh? Oh, let me let me see what the corporate tax rate's gonna be. Uh, not that I want him to raise it, but I want him to do something to you guys. I want him to get something going. How about how about some antitrust suits on some of you a holes? How about that? How about, how about leveling the playing field even more in uh, business? Oh, I know you guys hate that. CBS News reports, But if Mr. Trump tries to undo the legal process or disrupts a peaceful transition to Biden, the CEOs discuss making public statements and pressuring GOP legislatures in their states. Um, they're all fine with him taking the appeal to the court to a judicial process. They didn't want to deny him that, but that doesn't stop the transition, says Sonnenfeld. They said if it makes people feel better, it doesn't hurt anything to let that grind through. Oh, really? Well, thank you for letting us have the illusion of a court process. Action could include threats to stop donations to political action committees or even corporate relocations. Ooh, Ooh, well, you try it. You try it, Wall Street. See where it gets you. I know these Republicans, yeah, they're slowly becoming Trump Republicans, and that means populism. That means you need the people behind you, or you can't make any of this stuff work. So uh, you just keep buying and selling Biden all you want, because it's just making Biden look bad. I mean, Jesus. Do you need any more evidence that Biden is the candidate of the establishment when you've got Fortune 500 CEOs saying we'll intervene on his behalf? Oh, yeah, I'm sure they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. Nice going, Antifa. Way to vote. <laughs> ah, those guys don't vote. Uh, Joe Biden, in another Bright Breitbart article, more people may die if we don't coordinate on transition. Oh, isn't that a coincidence? Huh. I wonder what happens if we reveal that there was a lot of fraud and then really it was you who delayed everything. I mean, wouldn't that put the deaths on your head then? Because you didn't help a peaceful transition to the second term of Donald Trump. I think it might. Um, but this threat, oh, more people may die. This is all these guys have. And unfortunately, it works real well. It's working out a lot of people I know. They are petrified of dying at this thing. Now, some people I know, they're not, they haven't even put on a mask. <laughs> and, and God bless them. I wish I could do it. Now, see, I can't do it for a lot of reasons. First off, I was one of the guys to say, wear the mask in the beginning. And... I think wearing the mask during flu season isn't the worst thing you could do. Uh, but that being said, you know, I have elderly relatives and uh, for them, I'll put on the mask if, if only to, uh, you know, make them feel better and uh, not, you know, also when you interact with the public, especially in the state of New Jersey, you have to have a mask. Now, I'm pretty sloppy about it at this point, but. You know, I have it and I'll wear it, uh, at least to be polite. But, you know, most times, no mask. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not drawing my line at the mask anyway. Where I draw the line at is the closures. 
you know, you could wear a mask, not wear a mask, social distance, not social distance, do whatever you want. But it's not like people are coming up to you and coughing in your face. So open things up. Open things up. You don't have to go into a crowded Walgreens. You don't have to go. You could say, oh, that's too crowded. I'm not going in there. I did that before the virus. <laughs> uh, it's so crowded in there. I don't want to go in there. Ew, so many people. Um, do whatever you want. That's what makes this country gay. Great. But the, the idea that these idiots and this old man's going to tell me what to do every day, and especially Kamala Harris, no thank you. No. They're already talking about it. Kamala's talking about, oh, we got to get people off of meat. F you. I just had a steak. It was delicious. Wasn't that good steak, Joan? Oh, it was a T-bone, too. Guess who got the bone? That's why she's so... Oh, boy, you sacked out. You had a lot of meat. I left a lot of meat on that bone for little doggy. Very happy. And finally... Speaking of uh, Fortune 500 companies, the Washington Post editorial board calls to abolish the Electoral College. Hmm. Go figure. Go figure. Now that all the rich people are Democrats, <laughs> guess what they want to abolish? The Electoral College. I wonder why. Because right now there are more Democrats than Republicans. Right now. You see, there's a big change going on. And what these idiots don't realize is soon there's going to be more Republicans than Democrats. The transition has begun. Um, and it won't stop now because working people aren't going to be with the Democrats. And, um, you know, the people who want to work, the immigrants, they're not going to be with the Democrats much longer either. Hate to tell you. Hate to tell you. Um, so the mass numbers that the Democrats have counted on in years prior, that's all going away. And once all this cheating's exposed, oh, even more of their votes is going away because they had a lot of votes, which they would then magnify with their cheating. Mm, now you're not going to be able to do that in these big cities. Nope. And... Uh, who wants to stay in a big city these days? Every other weekend, you burn the place down, and uh, Trump ain't going to give you the money to rebuild. No. So it doesn't surprise me, the Washington Post, which, who owns it? I guess Bezos owns it. And, uh, you know, the CIA has a $600 million contract with Bezos. That's why uh, I think the Washington Post is so pro-CIA. So, it doesn't surprise me that they're so anti-Trump. But, what are you going to do? I'll tell you what I'd do. I don't trust the Washington Post. <laughs> and I wouldn't less, listen to them with the Electoral College. It's time to let the majority rule. No. No. The system we have was designed to keep people from voting themselves money or hey do you know what the majority would have done after september 11th after 9 11 do you know what they were ready to do they were ready to go nuclear on anybody you pointed them at oh yeah they were ready we started two wars on a bunch of lies and it could have been much worse. We could have we could have invade, ended up invading Iran too, which would have been much worse. That's what happens when you let the majority rule. Now you have to let the people rule, but you can't let them rule all the time everything because they tend to be fickle. And it it, just like any other group of people, it might take them a little while to get the message. You know. Populism is great. I, I, I think it's a, a, a really new thing. It's on the forefront, but, you know, I learned in improv, you can't 100% listen to the audience because the audience will dare you to, to destroy your show. Go ahead, destroy it. Yeah, you won't do that. And then you got to make a choice. <laughs> Uh, so you can't totally listen to the audience. It's the same thing in 
politics. You can't totally listen to them. You know, the mob doesn't necessarily have everyone's interest at heart. And uh, if you if you did abolish the Electoral College, uh, there would be only campaigning in big cities. That would be it. Even now. It would be New York, L.A., Chicago. And how are those places run? Yeah, not great. Not great. And then more money would pour into the cities and the rural countryside would just fall to pieces. Uh, we have a nice balance. You know, the cities, the population centers, they still have tremendous influence in the Electoral College. They just don't have it all. <laughs> if all the little states gang up against them, then there's like there's a bit of a balance there. If you just abolish the Electoral College, none of those people have any power. It was pointless for people in Wyoming to vote. Pointless. Their vote won't mean jack. Do you really want to disenfranchise voters that much? The Washington Post does. And probably so does Joe Biden and the Democratic Party. Man, how, how far they have fallen. They used to be for the people. Now they're for the Fortune 500. The elite. The people who want to run the show. I'll pass. No more Democrats for me.